lay among the Negroes, the same is found. And the Obi man or Obi woman is habitually consulted in any case of doubt and difficulty, just as the old woman or the old woman of Endor by Saul. So here again, these so called these slaves are showing on these traits or whatever, they trace right back to the Sunnah. And it goes again that the old, the older self, that's a bottle of familiar spirits, what they sometimes would say the ghost of uh, the dead one. That's how they were trying to make it all spooky and I forgot a part of it. Is it voodoo like that magic where they keep where they put some stuff into puppets and then they try to take over people's bodies with it? That's what they, that's what they say, whatever. Even in the definition when you look up like uh, old and all that kind of thing to say it's like sorcery and like ventriloquist and all that. But we understand that's how they want us to think. So when you hear something like that, you want to run away from it. But once you actually study and go into it, it's not such a scary thing. Not saying take over bodies and all this and that, because a lot of people walk around mindless. So somebody already took over their body. It's wrong. It's wrong. A lot of people sit there and they watch TV and they believe everything they see on TV. Every little thing on November 4th, there's going to be a big blackout. We, we all going to die. They think black. Yeah, they think they black. They still call themselves Negro. Or we not, we, we none of that. But they believe this. So really, is they mind right or is they under a boom spell? Mm. What you think? Mm. Don't worry, think about it. Think about it. You ain't got the answer right now. Unless you want to. I think the mind is right. The mind not right? Because. It's not really voodoo. It's not really voodoo because all they're doing is like they're just believing what they see on TV. They're not thinking about it. They're not checking this. They're just saying like that's like if someone just says some random thing like, "Oh, Mexico's gonna have a war with us tomorrow." If that's what it's like, just believing nonsense. When, when, when he comes in there. Yeah. It's long. It's long. Good demonstration, brother. But again, um, uh, we mentioned the Shanti. It's not just about the Shanti. Because once you go into Africa, the West Coast of Africa, there's so many incidents. It's hard to say when, well, I say the Israelites, like how their way of custom actually started up. Even still, you go into the El, El Dad, the day and night, in the ninth century, he wrote, he wrote how, how south of the Sahara in Algiers, they spoke Hebrew and Arabic language on the West Coast. And I'm saying, what well, people saying? Now they came over here, they brought this custom over here. Not only did they bring it, they came with it, but it was already here too, before the so called slavery. So when he got off and they started to mingle on the low, they were like, oh, you speak Hebrew? Oh, Shema? Oh, okay, okay. Don't worry, when I break out of here, I'm coming by you. Mm -hmm. That's how it's getting down. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's like you love. And the new books, we tell us along the way. Mm hmm. Yeah, because you know it's the main thing, though. The main thing was from Mali. Mali was Islamic. But even before they was Islamic, whatever, they was Hebrews. A lot of this, a lot of the first of all, a lot of the Western, I'm talking about myself, but a lot of the Hebrew, uh, like, you know, a lot of the West Coast of Africa right now predominantly Islam. But before they switched to Islam, a lot of them was Israelites. But a lot of the reason a lot of them changed was well, not just by the sword, because at first the Hebrews controlled the, the trade routes coming from the so-called the Middle East all the way over across Africa, whatever. And then after a while, of course, you know, the Islam swept in and started taking over. They started taking over the, the roots, uh, the trade routes and everything. And now with that, they knew the laws, whatever. That's why they was getting on them. Like, if you're not following the laws, whatever, that's why in like 260, 265, whatever, like, if you're not observing the Sabbath, you need apes and savages and all this now. They knew the laws and they didn't respect the ones who was not following them. But even still, they, they took over a lot of the Israelite kings or queens or whatever. It was just a political move. It was a money move. It's like, you know what? No, this long, they got this thing a lot, whatever, you know. To get down with them, I gotta be, I gotta be able to talk about that Quran. Or whatever. You know what? Yo, we switching over to Quran. And that's how a lot of them switch. Some did go by the sword, though. But it all ties back in. Again, you see the connection between Hebrews and Arabic. 
So, you know, if you say to us, you're a Hebrew Muslim, you have a problem saying I'm a Hebrew Muslim. What? What do you mean? Both? Yes. Both. So, I'm the one. So, uh, of course, in the Empire of Mali's, uh, Mansi Musa, uh, the sun guy, but uh, let me get back to uh, where I was at. The reason I ask you this because you know what I'm saying you come across this like in Spain you talk to an Israelite. One of the first thing I ask you is what tribe you from. So one of the first thing you ask, what tribe? What tribe? Well, there's something there's, there's something specific, specific that we teach it. I ain't got that to be yeah. yet. Go to your because again this is the proper set up a lot of things for us. Go to your one on ones. Who do you associate this with? So you got to study. Let me go to the genealogy of Jesus. Oh, you, you got uh, um, Abraham, Bulls by Ruth, uh, Jesse, uh, Solomon, King David, Hezekiah, and Joseph by Mary. Mm-hmm. But, <coughs> you need to do Abraham. Where was he born? In Bethlehem and Judah in the house of King David. 
So we try. Judah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Plain sight. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but even still, it is now. So we hear a lot of Judah. A lot of Judah. Because it would be from, from the house of that this Judah is the one that holds the scepter of power until it's passed on. That's that's oh, okay. So it's a little song. Huh? He's the other son of the So, so. He's the fourth son, though. Yeah, yeah, he's the fourth. He came number one because of the situation. Mm hmm. What do you want to say? So, uh. So, Noble Jewelry would be like Judah to us, too, as well? Nah, I mean, he was. I, I wouldn't say Judah from the tribe. I'm trying to remember where I read that at. I think it was the resurrection. Okay. It says something like that. Define him in. It's just a lot of information. I'm just trying to. I know it's seeing that right now. That's why I piece sometimes. That's so why I say I don't want you to go crazy with it, but sometimes you gotta stick to the basic information. Sure. Gotcha. Just stick to the basics. Sure. Even still, he said uh, the 12 breastplates. You know what the, well, because the 12 breastplates, you know what that represents the 12 tribes. So yeah. Each one had a certain stone. Well, so when you figure out which stone is the tribe of Judah, you let me know. You got to figure out right now. Oh, you want to look it up? You got it? Uh huh. Oh. Uh, I thought you were going to break it down to me. Let me know what, what color it was. Um, oh, yeah, what was that? Of course, now that, that paragraph that he just broke down about the Jews. Now, here they always said that they perform cross cousin marriages. You can go to Numbers 20, uh, excuse me, Numbers 36 12. And they were married into the family of the sons of Manasseh and the sons of Joseph. And their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. But now, is this actual, actual blood cousins? Or is it just one people from this tribe married people from that tribe? That's why you got to keep in, keep in mind. So. And then also, the Ashanti Jews, they observed the laws of uncleanness after childbirth. You go to Leviticus. Again, like I said, I was using the proper words to start off with that, and do my own little research, and then you can tie it right back into the Bible or Tanakh, or even the Quran of Mecca, and you can tie tie it all back in, because it all this is where it all goes back to. The laws of uncleanness in the child is twenty-one. Leviticus twenty. Leviticus twelve. Verse 1 to 8. The book of Leviticus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation from her infirmity shall she be unclean. In the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks. As in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. And when the days of her purifying were fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest, who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that hath born a male or female child. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two oh, pigeons. That's, that's, that's good. Well, uh, that's just giving you an example. In the course of the message, the law of plainness, Leviticus 15, 19, 29, you ain't got to read that. I'm about to talk about ceremonial evolutions. Again, the Shanti, we're going to talk about the breastplate. And again, uh, now another author, 
T. Howard Bowditch, a European who came in close contact with Ashanti, made a comment between, made a connection, excuse me, made a connection between the customs and laws of West Africa to ancient Egypt and Ethiopians. The Abyssinians, ancient Egyptians, is the same thing that we already said before. The Ashanti did never fight on Saturday, same as the Galos, never on a Friday. That's another tribe from Africa. Again, I'm just trying to tie this all in, remember? And again, if you can see just open one little passage, how we can just open up doors into so many different things. And when you get the chance, you need to study this stuff, whatever, because when we do missionary work, you never know who's going to ask you something. That person may know something, it may be something simple. So, uh, was I, uh, the Abyssinians and the Ashanti, they both began their new year in order, the civil year of the Jews. That's the Rosh Hashanah. And we all know that that's around September, October. Now, I don't know if you know, but what did you want to say, brother? Oh, in Exodus 12, I believe it's first one or first two, it says that the month of Abib is supposed to be the first one. It's around Passover. That's when we're supposed to begin our year. But, uh, go ahead. I am lost now. What's Hello? in a, what month is a bib? That's a Hebrew, go by the Hebrew calendar. See, that's a calendar our ancient forefathers and foremothers went by. See, the calendar that you, we use now, January, February, March, that's the European calendar. Gregorian. Yeah, exactly, Gregorian calendar. There so, were different calendar systems he's trying to explain to you. You understand? So now I'm using the calendar, because like I said, when you go into the Bible, in English it may tell you one thing, but then when you read it in Hebrew, you understand it gives a different meaning. Like the first month, like when we celebrate Passover, or you know what Passover is, or Easter, that's actually the beginning of the month. It's the same time as spring, the beginning of the year. That's the beginning of the year. But then now we say that how we celebrate two years, that year, that's actually the beginning of the whole year. But that's representing when the Most High said that when I let you out of Egypt, you're supposed to remember that it's supposed to be a day of memorial for you, for you and all your future generations. And this is going to be the first month, same time around spring, you get what you give me life. Around September, October, which they call Rosh Hashanah, which is Hebrew for New Year, that's what they call the Civil Year. How many months are in a year in that? It's 12. It's 12, and then sometimes. Well, the European Jews, they have 13 with uh, what you call it, uh, with a beat year. But we basically go by 12. And our calendar isn't exact. But doesn't a leap year only add one day? How come yeah. they get a whole other month? That's how they design it. But we see, we don't go by the European calendar. That's how the Jews do it. See, they go by the Hebrew calendar. The way the way you find out it's right and exact, but the way if we read Leviticus 23, how it breaks down the festivals, and it's always around the same time, like Sukkot, which passed around, I think it was October the 5th. And one way you know how it's always right exactly, that, Sukkot is always a full moon. Every year. Every year is a full moon on Sukkot. You can get it all together. Yeah, I think we're ready to come up here, man. We'll be coming up here soon. Uh, again, where was I at? Bum, 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 bum. Oh, yeah. Hmm? He's very much trusted to those one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. And of course, also, they have the priesthood. The priesthood is hereditary, in particular, in, and it stayed within particular families. This tribe with the priests. Come on, boys. with the priests. And of course it stayed it stayed in the family. It was passed on. I've only down much longer, right? Yeah, plenty of times. Plenty of times. Mm-hmm. See again, like I said, you come across Israelites or somebody who the Bible whatever, when they know this tribe or whatever, you tell them your tribe of Judah, you gotta kinda associate yourself with some of these tribes. It's the tribe of Levi. Pretty much these people that show us again, they show the same customs as, as over there. As uh, over here, West Africa, 
which of course goes all the way back to the so-called holy lands of Canaan. It goes back to the Canaanites. Now all the Canaanites were wicked. And I know y'all know the grand she broke that down so many times. Huh? So, um, but also, one of the other things is white is a sacred color in Ashanti. As it was in Egypt, the priests are not only distinguished by the white color, but frequently chalk their bodies in it. How does that tie back into our teaching? White means God. God means purity. Purity. Oh no. White means white, white means God. God. No. White means purity. Purity means God. God means rule of the land. Oh, you're going to say the same thing? Oh, you're going to say the same thing? Oh, okay. So it's good that you know that. So, so, 
the pharaohs. Yeah, you did. 
and I was like, oh yeah. Uh, first of all, I was like, y'all like the color of the beads, which is green or whatever. But then I was like, actually, green is the stone that represents the tribe of Judah. Oh. And once he said, he was like, oh, okay. All right, then he just, he, all right, he wrote it. What does A B? It's mama. Oh, A B? It's horrible. It means it's Anno Domino. That's Latin for in the year of all over. Um, you got BC, which some say, uh, or BCE before Christian era, or before Christ, before Jesus Christ. Like the, the Europeans calendar system, it's called the Gregorian calendar, and it it's based on the purported uh, death of, 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 of Jesus Christ. So, you know, um, actually it's the birth, the birth, right? The birth, it's important. So, year one in the Gregorian calendar, would be the, the year that Jesus was born. And you know, prior to that, BC, like 100 years BC, it goes backwards in time. So BC is going backwards and AD is going forward. So Hail Domini is Latin for the year of our Lord. And it's based on the European Roman calendar. So, you understand? So, this is long. You said that the latitude was 30? Uh, S-U-S-E, he places it at 30 degrees north, 70 degrees west. He looked that up, that's Morocco. And then uh, where Bonich places Yahudi, about 20 degrees north, 2 degrees east, and that's further south of Mali. Mm -hmm. And uh, he places Mar Maroc, M-A-R-O-A, 18 degrees north, 6 degrees east, and Milani, 15 degrees north, and Two degrees east, and it's pretty much this all goes back into the west coast of Africa. And that's it. Now it's even further break down how some of them will be went over there. You know what? We gotta get down with this. You know what? Yeah, we might the king or queen, whatever, you know, we transform, switch it over. You mean you're a
This in reference to Mr. Bowditch's kingdom of Yehudi, I may be permitted to say, is the only state in society in which that the oppressed nation is suffered to live. Now again, not that one, but one, two, three, one. And the tribes without security in their possession, without public revenues or arms, are hourly exposed to insult and rapine from the blind zeal and active bigotry by which their lords are animated in these countries. The land occupied by these people cover a wide extent between Masina, which is in Mali, and Kabi, which is the Ivory Coast. They are said to be mingled also with the upper Fula, F-O-U-L-A-H-A tribes, eastward of Timbuktu. In many parts of Morocco, they have inheritance or employed as artificers in the cities and towns. Pretty much that's going on since see like this in here, the, the Muslim had it on lock. But the reason that they had it on that, because like, it wasn't cool like that, but again, you go into, uh, where is it, in the Surah, 265, which I spoke about before, and then you go into uh, Surah 98. Thereabout, 
after the Arabs were acquainted in Central Africa, it's pretty much just going in like even these Europeans. I bet this book was written in the early 1900s. So a lot of the people that see us talking, they're going to, they did the research at the late 1800s, they were going amongst them and getting to know these people and observing their customs. Because that's how you're going to do it. They come amongst us, study us, then try to fight us out. You know what's funny? The, the, the Ansar, mm -hmm. 